Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is part three of the building desktop products with JavaScript cores. We are already at part three here. So and today I want to talk a bit about what Electron is and how do we set up the basic project for it basically go through what I did at the live stream and talk a bit about uh, the commits that I did outside of live stream. So if you even if you've seen the live stream, you're probably going to find some new information over here. Right, so let's start with uh, talking about what Electron is and how it works. In case you don't know, Electron JS is a um, uh, project that was initially done uh, for Atom, which is the um, editor from GitHub guys. So this is maintained and developed by GitHub. And the idea is very simple. They took uh, Chrome or rather Chromium, which is the open source version of it, and attached Node.js to it. So it unifies Chrome, Chromium, uh, sorry, Chromium, Node.js and V8 under one nice platform, which is completely cross platform. So since you know, Chromium kind of works on Linux, Mac OS, Windows and whatever other platform you might imagine. So does Electron JS. So you can write your app once and then run it on most of the desktop platforms, which is kind of great. And um, since it's Node.js and Chromium, you can use JavaScript for that. So which is even greater. As you can see right here, uh, Electron is now at version 162, which is slightly lagging behind the Node.js and Chromium releases. So as you might know, the latest Chrome is 57, the stable one, 58 coming up quite soon. And the latest Node is 7.8, I believe, uh, and they use 7.4 here. But you know, it's not nothing critical, basically, we can work with it. So how exactly does it work? Uh, well, there is a great uh, page, which is called um, Wait, well, let me scroll up, which is called Essential Electron by uh, Jessica Lord that explains Electron in plain English, which uh, actually is pretty great. I find this to be like the best explanation I could find. So I will link as usual to this page in the description of the video if you want to read it yourself. But uh, the general idea is quite simple. So as I said, there is uh, three components actually to it. So one I forgot is the native APIs. So uh, the Electron provides access to things like windows menus, um, tray, whatever you can imagine in a context of operating system through the JavaScript APIs that are wrapped around native APIs, which makes development of desktop apps quite much easier. And uh, the next thing is that it actually runs in two processes, right? So we have the main process, which runs the logic and which is run um, under node, I believe. And then we have a render processes that are essentially what you see. And there can be like main, I think main process is only one of them. Um, let me see main process, node.js, electron main model, CS common tasks. Uh, let me clarify. Yeah, it seems like it's only one usually, right? And then you get multiple render processes, which um, are node and DOM together. And they are can be displayed in whatever form you want. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's the best explanation of it. So you have your main menu, main app that is, you know, in this case, for example, here, this is our main process. And then the render processes are those tabs that I'm currently in. So it's I think it's the best way of, of um, uh, thinking about it. There is, of course, a way to communicate between them. So there's this IPC um, uh, protocol, basically, that allows you to just send messages uh, between processes to communicate, um, which is I guess we're going to use it at some point. So we're going to see it together. And I think that is uh, all I want to say here. So there's some additional information here, which you can um, have a look yourself. But um, that is basically it. So let's have a look at my commits uh, and uh, actually see the project setup. So um, the setup is quite simple. So we have our index.js, which is an entry point, right? And uh, this is basically copied from uh, Electron Starter Kit. So there's nothing magical here. It's, it's really straightforward. So you can see here we're requiring the Electron package, which is the Electron itself. And uh, in this case, once the create window is called, we are uh, creating a new main window, which is going to be our main window, as you might imagine. Uh, we're giving it with an hate, which is straightforward. And then we'll load in the URL, which is our index.html file. Um, and we're using this URL format to make it cross platform because, you know, you cannot really just pass in the file. Um, in format you want to have and for example, that works on Mac OS that won't work on Windows, right? So you, you want to use a real format, which is cross platform and will work anywhere. 
Um, then I added this line. So this was actually commented in the original starter kit, but this opens our dev tools so that whenever we start the project, we actually see the dev tools and can actually debug it efficiently. Uh, and then we just clean up um, the reference to window objects uh, once the window is closed to actually free the memory, right? Um, so then we put this create window on app ready. So this is the one of the Electron JS uh, events. And then we watch for window closed. And unless it's macOS, uh, we, we quit the app. So if you know that macOS sometimes does this thing, you know, when it, even if the app doesn't have any windows, it still might leave here in a um, in, in, um, dock or have a menu or something among those lines. Basically, this is like good practice yeah, for it. And then on activate again, this is OSX thing. So if you click on the icon here, it will create a new window. Really straightforward. The dependencies are very simple. Electron and I added ESLint with Prettier here. We'll talk about Prettier in a second. And then index.js is just an HTML file. But as you can see here, we're actually using script tags to access process, which is a Node.js thing, which means that we can actually write Node.js code here. So, and as you can see here, I'm using require to require the uh, main um, index file, which in this case just did console log. So you can go ahead and check out this commit and do npm start, which will just run the electron and you will see the electron window working. In fact, let let us do this uh, right now. So projects, there we go. Uh, npm start. I think I actually got to be a bit more complicated here yeah, because I have the latest version checked out. But as you can see here, you know, we have the uh, dev tools here, we have our app. We can actually inspect all of that and we'll see that this is in fact a plain HTML here. So it's all great. And uh, yeah, so this is the first commit. Uh, then I've added uh, React and Webpack uh, set up. So this is something that I was like, at first I was like, okay, how do I do that properly? And I decided to go with Express and Webpack and you know, all the, essentially the same setup we did in the previous course which uh, kind of rubbed me the wrong way because you know we have a powerful platform that merges together node and, and browser yet we're still using express and this is how it's done for example in uh, electron react starter kit uh, in my opinion this is not efficient right because we, we essentially start the server and we take the port and um, later on i came up with a better solution that i think is gonna be um in the end is like the downside is that we don't have the hot reload here, but the upside is that it's going to be way more efficient in terms of source code, I think in the end. So what I did is I was like, okay, we're actually using node, right? So what we can do is we can put a hook here and this is again only for development. So we're going to tweak the code later on for uh, production. So we're going to use the baby register hook and then require our uh, source code, which will then just work and we can remove all those billions of webpack dependencies because we don't care about them anymore and uh, in this case we can actually just use uh, plain javascript which is great and jsx as well so this is one change that i did over the um live stream right so we have again uh, created the babel rc file because we have to provide the um config for the Babel register hook, not inside of the webpack, but you know, that actually worked out really, really well. So I'm going to see actually, I'm not 100% not sure that it's going to work throughout the complete app, but I think it should because um, most of the things we want are going to work like this, but we're going to see how it goes along the way, right? Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about is Prettier. So this is, an, uh, if you haven't heard about it, is an opinionated JavaScript formatter from the guys back at Facebook. Uh, and the idea is that it uh, takes your code, it disassembles it into AST, and then pretty prints it back. And it makes it really powerful. So the thing is, uh, you know, having consistent code is usually a kind of a problem, especially when you have a lot of people working there. Like Prettier solves it in a very simple way. You just give it a bunch of rules and okay, it is opinionated, so you cannot change all of them, but you can pick like quotes, you can pick trailing commas, you can pick uh, trailing semicolons, uh, whatever, you know, there's like a bunch of configs and then you just press a button and it formats your file in a nice way. So let me just demonstrate it. I'm gonna open uh, VS Code here. Because I'm, this is now how I write my code, right? So I, uh, whatever I break here, so I can write it in one line, you know, and, and as soon as I hit save, um, 
it actually <laughs> broke it. What the hell? Um, that is not what I expected to see. Um, okay. I get, oh, wait a second. It, is, it doesn't. No, it does. What the hell? That is very interesting. Um, uh, okay. Format. No, now it. That is so. I-, I think I found a bug. <laughs> okay, now it works. That is very weird. But the idea is that you can write maybe it, no, it should work with JSX, right? It has JSX support. So basically, the idea is that as long as you write the code that is uh, correct, um, I don't know. Let me take something like index.js. Yeah, let's let, let's take this one. So plain JavaScript always works well. I haven't written actually uh, too much JSX with it, so uh, I'll try to reproduce that and submit a bug report if I actually can do that. Um, yeah. So the idea is that you can write your um, JavaScript in any way you want. Like, for example, imagine we, we was writing that in one line, you know, manually and was like, okay, screw the formatting. Then once you press save, it actually reformats everything for you, which is amazing. And I have it now activated on file save and it now formats all my files uh, on save whenever I hit control S. Uh, and it works really, really well, along with um, ESLint uh, config and plugin, but where you can say basically, you know, what kind of options do you want to have. And along with Airbnb config, I actually created a nice ESL and RC file that works for me pretty well. And you know, I don't have to think about formatting anymore, I can just write my code, hit save, get nicely formatted code anytime. I mean, aside from the bugs that happen, I'm not even sure why that happened. But okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this this is prettier. I personally like it a lot, and this is why I included it in the project. Um, I think you know, especially if you're if you're thinking about contributing to this project, it's going to simplify your job as well. Um, if you're working with more than one person on a project, I would recommend looking at it. So there's again there's uh, recipes for uh, stuff like you know Husky. That is a pre-commit uh, hook where you can actually uh, run prettier on com- pre-commit yeah so that actually get it will uh you don't have to format on save but the git will automatically format everything for you that is useful again when you're with more than one person that works on project and they might not have prettier enabled on save but that will basically force to run it on all the files every time so there you go um i think that basically covers everything that i've done um no let, let me have a quick look so we want this one, right? And uh, we want to have a look at the commits. I think that's it. Yeah. So basically, I removed the webpack. I talked about that. I talked about pre-tier in ESLint. And yeah, that's so that's it for the part three. Uh, from the next part, I guess the next live stream, which is going to happen sometime soon, uh, I'm going to start actually building the logic, the first um, plugin that is going to turn into plugin later, I guess. First entity that is going to handle uh, Crunchyroll, I guess, for the beginning, or maybe YouTube, let's see. And uh, yeah, then we can plug it into our um, Electron app and see how that works out. So um, that's it from my side. Thank you for watching. And as usually, I see you next time. Bye.